Zoom and Riverside are two of the most popular softwares for recording remote podcast interviews. But which one is the better option for podcasters? In this video, we're going to take a look at both options, take a look at some of the features and compare how easy they are to use, and then have a quick look. And then at the end, I'll do a comparison between both of them in terms of video and audio quality. So Zoom is a popular VoIP software or voice over internet protocol software that's been popular for a long time with businesses uh, for personal use and for podcasters alike. Zoom makes it really easy to start a call with many participants and record it. And it's free to use on, on calls of up to 40 minutes. It's around £13 a month if you want to remove that cap. Riverside, on the other hand, is newer to the game. And what it does differently, it does record your online interviews, but instead of recording over the internet like Zoom and Google Meet and Teams does, it records locally. It records each participant's voice and video locally on their computer, and then it uploads it to Riverside Systems for you to download after. And what this does it, is it keeps your recordings from being affected by either party's network connection, leading to a higher quality end result. You can record for as long as you want, even on the free plan, unlike Zoom, but it does restrict what you can download. So after your two-hour trial, you can record up to 720p and you can only export a single track. So both speakers or all speakers will be on a single track. Whereas on Zoom, you, even on the free tier, you can record separate speakers to separate tracks, giving you more options when editing. In terms of extra features specifically for podcasters, Riverside has quite a few. It has editing tools built in. Uh, you can record up to 4K. And then if you pay more, you can get AI transcriptions and show notes and things like that. Uh, Zoom is a bit more straightforward. Uh, in that you can, yeah, it doesn't have most of these things. But when you're recording, it does allow you to display a whiteboard, share your screen, start get an automatic AI summary and a few other things now. Now, these features are all well and good, providing the software is also easy to use. And I find that Riverside and Zoom differ there as well. So Zoom, a lot of you are already going to be familiar with using and a lot of your guests will be familiar with using as well. And you can use Zoom in the standalone app like you can see on screen at the moment. You can also use Zoom in a web browser like Google Chrome, Safari, Firefox, Microsoft Edge. With Riverside, you can use their mobile app or you can use it on your web browser on Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge at time of recording. So it makes it a little bit trickier to set up and a little bit trickier to navigate if, for example, your guest doesn't have either of those browsers and they're not maybe comfortable with installing a new one. Zoom is easy to get set up on a call. You can just start a meeting and then share a link with somebody. You can integrate Zoom with a lot of calendar apps like Calendly and things like that. It's a similar kind of process with Riverside. You've got these studios, which are sort of like digital recording studios, which you can enter and then share a link to invite somebody to record in, in that studio. Riverside has a really nice and clean UI and it feels a little bit more like you're in control of a recording studio, whereas Zoom feels a lot more just like a straightforward calling app. And if you do decide to give Riverside a go, then if you head to claracast.com forward slash Riverside, and I'll leave a link in the description, and then use Claracast as the coupon code, you can get 15% off your first purchase. And that is an affiliate link, so we do get a small portion of sales through it. But it's worth watching the rest of the video to see if it's even the right software for you. After you've recorded and you've clicked stop and everyone's left the conversation on Zoom, it's just going to automatically record your recordings. On Riverside, you do have to be a bit more careful and make sure that everyone has uploaded before they leave the call. You'll then find your recordings in the recording section and you'll have the option to download them in different levels of quality. Bear in mind that Zoom does have a lot of options when it comes to the recording quality. So you might listen to an example of somebody's Zoom recording and it might look and sound completely different to someone else's. And obviously your mic and your video camera is going to affect the quality on both of these apps. I'll leave a link in the description to how you can get the most out of Zoom um, by picking the right settings. But basically, if you set original sound for musicians uh, and make sure that that's checked in the top left when you start recording, you can make sure your camera's set to HD and you can also make sure that you're recording a separate audio file for each participant. Riverside also does have various quality options to tinker with, but generally it's going to give you a higher quality result. But regardless, let's take a quick look at some video recorded via Zoom and some video recorded via Riverside. So here we are recording full screen with Zoom with original sound for musicians turned on 
and I'm just testing the video quality and the audio quality. The lighting and the microphone's a little bit different, so there's going to be some differences there. But generally, I'll be able to see if we have a look at how sort of grainy things are um, and the clarity on some something like the, the CDs on the shelf behind me and things like that. Uh, and on, on my face, you can see that Riverside, you're getting slightly higher quality. And then here we are in Riverside, recording with the same microphone, the same webcam. You can see there's a little bit more clarity, a little bit, it looks a little bit more natural. And the audio quality you might notice sounds a little higher fidelity. Bear in mind that YouTube also does some compression on the video and audio when I upload it to YouTube um, and when I export this video so that you're not going to see exactly the same as, as I'm seeing, but I can notice a slight improvement. But the main thing that Riverside claims is that because it's recording locally, rather than over the internet avoids network issues. And this is a little bit more difficult to demonstrate, but I'm going to show you a clip now of a recording that I made over Zoom for my podcast. And you'll notice that there's a little bit of lag. The the sort of voice, uh, the, the audio and video don't match up perfectly, but there's a, a significant lag where the video stops for a, a sort of quarter of a second, half a second or so. And then I'll just, for completion's sake, play a clip of an interview recorded via Riverside. My passion was driving us to 150, 160 episodes, the hours, the weekends, you know, like kind of, it's just, it, it feels right. What do you need? You need a computer, a laptop or a MacBook, a microphone like this that you can then connect as a USB. And then we're using something like Zoom or Riverside. So if you're looking for the highest quality possible for your online interviews, then Riverside is a better option in comparison to Zoom. And there are other systems like Zencaster and Squadcast that offer a similar service to what Riverside does. If you're gonna be interviewing guests that are maybe less tech savvy, or you just wanna make things as smooth and easy as possible, then Zoom still is a solid option and probably a better option for you. And you can still get a high quality recording with Zoom as long as you use the right settings. You do also have the option of recording locally. So even if you you're recording Zoom, you could hit record on your computer on a digital audio workstation like Audacity or GarageBand, and then it means you're recording that highest quality uh, audio directly to your computer. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you try either of these apps and which one you decide on going with. And for more podcast tips and guides, then hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.